Right, all the front suspension is ragged off the car, bar obviously the coilovers. To replace it all with brand new stuff, simply because it's going for an MOT and also while it's all apart, it makes sense to kind of do everything on it and then I can actually use the car once it's once the engine conversion is done. So we've got new uh, bottom arms, new track rod inner and outer ends, drop links, brakes, brake pads. I'm waiting for delivery of the sliders for the calipers because the pistons are fine. They're, they're grim looking, but I'm not one of these people that's going to sit there painting like a colour on the caliper. Just want them to work. So that's that. Obviously, these are stripped down now for new wheel bearings, which is a pain in the backside job. Seems to be really awkward to do on a Lupo or a Rosa. Um, but yeah, going to put all this together now. And then we could start looking at whether it needs a chassis notch or not. So, fingers crossed it don't. Right, I've chucked two bolts in the inner cup of the... 6B gearbox, obviously the shaft's in, as you can probably see, let me see if I can zoom in, shaft's roughly bolted in, now the plan is to see whether it needs chassis notching up here, which obviously I believe with the diff being kind of further over that way, you're actually moving this angle, this shaft obviously further away from the chassis anyway, so I don't think it'll need notching this side, it may need notching the other side, but obviously I'm checking the long side first, then I've got to assemble the other side and check that. So a block of wood on the bottom arm. Obviously the car's on axle stands. Um, and it's a case of obviously full drop at the minute, which is irrelevant for any kind of um, chassis notch. But that's all the way down. And then ride height will be about midway. So basically all I'm doing is lifting this up to the point it starts lifting the car. As soon as I lift the car away, I can kind of work out that that's roughly all the way to bump, which is now. You can see it's lifting the car substantially. So there, I can get two fingers in. Or something like a... You can see. There's loads of room between drive shaft and the chassis so yeah no chassis notch needed on this side so it's going to be a case of just drop the car back down loosely fit the shaft in on the other side and see whether or not it needs notch on the shorter side because in theory it's further over that socket so it may need it um, i'm kind of hoping it doesn't but we'll see in a minute right this is the short shaft and to be fair as you can see it's pointless even jacking this up. It's miles away from anything. I mean, it's a good bit of clearance on there as well. See the inner CV boot. So yeah, no, uh, the way I've done it, there's no notching needed. The only thing that is gonna be a bit of a pain is this shaft is gonna need to be in before putting the gearbox in. So I don't think you're gonna have enough room to move this hub out. So yeah, I'm going to uh, do what I need to do. And then as I'm fitting the engine back in, I'm going to make sure the shaft's in first. Just because it's it's just really tight. It's going to be really awkward to try and get that out of there. Just with the angle you're going to have on a hub. I mean, it's possible, but for me, I'm just going to literally do it like that and have it kind of sat like that. So yeah, job's are good and looks, uh, looks like there's loads of clearance. Happy with that. Right, so um, basically engine's back out again. The other mount's done perfectly and it's just on to kind of sorting out this, this notch. It's realised that neither short or long drive shaft needs a chassis notch, so it's only a case of just closing this box back up. Um, and the other thing that I've done additionally, which is kind of optional, um, is cut this tab off of the subframe. Now the subframe's pressed together and then spot welded. You can see the spot welds if you clean it back which is further back. Um, however, once I've took that off, I've kind of ran some weld down the side anyway and ground that back slightly. Um, it's just because if ever the mount goes, then there's a potential that it could kind of the rear of the gearbox catch this. So there's loads of room there. That'll make getting the engine in and out easier. And then as for the chassis cut, basically I've worked out you need to take 10 mil. It's about 10 mil out to clear a six speed and then obviously whatever you take out of there you need to re replace it with some good thick steel so it's three mil steel so i'm replacing it with three mil steel and i've also put 
this additional piece on here. Now, the reason I've done that is because if you look very carefully, you'll see it's spot welded across. So there's uh, obviously more than one piece of steel that kind of mates on there. So with that spaced part on, once that's kind of sat in, I'm across that bit where the panels meet. So I can get a real good hot weld in there, which will penetrate probably all the panels at once. So I'm going to weld obviously up there around here and down. This obviously bit will be filled in with a MIG. Um, and then I'm just going to make sure that it's kind of tacked where it needs to do. Just hammer it out. And that's it. So it's not a very deep kind of chassis notch that it needs for the gearbox. Um, and then there's no chassis notch needed for any drive shaft or anything like that. So yeah, main thing is to make sure all in here is cleaned out. Um, I've etch primed both sides. Once all that's welded, I am going to chuck a load of, um, oh, I can't think what it's called, wax oil down the both chassis rails. Once all that's cleaned out, um, but yeah, for the time being, plan is to weld this part in. Right, all the welding's done. Uh, the black stuff that's on there is seam sealer. Basically, I've used a PU product for that. Uh, left it dry overnight, so it's touched dry this morning. It's ridiculously cold in this garage, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to chuck over some more paint and then I can kind of leave it. I'm not doing a show build, or quite obviously, um, or I'd be having everything cleaned back and painting the engine bay for a start, the same colour as the car, um, <laughs> which I'm not doing. I just want the engine in to work and whatever. So yeah, the uh, mechanical side is what I'm more bothered about as opposed to what it looks like. But at the same time, I want to protect it. So obviously PU sealed anywhere where I've done any welding. We've got um, the etch primer, which is zinc-based etch. So obviously that's a uh, good protection as well. And then same on the subframe. So as soon as kind of I get off this video, I'm going to clean up, paint a few bits patched in. Then I'm going to wait till my stone chip arrives and I'm going to clean obviously all the chassis rails. I'm going to stone chip protect it. Uh, when that's done, probably before putting the engine in, I might run around with um, wax oil so I can get it in all kind of nooks and crannies down the chassis rails and stuff. Get it all oiled back up. That's that. But obviously today while I'm waiting for paint to dry, which is literally what I'll be doing, um, I'm going to look at these, which is the gear cables. So obviously this is a five speed cables that have come out or that will be coming out. Um, and I'm obviously replacing it with the Fabio stuff, which is the Mark IV um, six-speed. You probably use a five-speed selector, I would have thought, with a five-speed gearbox. Obviously, I've got six gears, so these are no good for me. So, yeah, it's a case of dropping the exhaust off, dropping the silver foil, which is underneath the car. It's like a protection heat kind of protection thing. It's not this sort of stuff, but it's underneath. Um, and then also taking out some of the interior because I need to get the centre column out completely because I need to modify the floor slightly. But yeah, uh, I'm going to crack on and hopefully, fingers crossed, you'll see me in a second on the next part. Right, so I've gone to the effort this morning of removing the centre console, the exhaust, the foil under tray to get this bad boy out, which is the five-speed gear selector. Now, I've got the Fabia six speed gear selector here and it looks like it's going to be a pain in the backside to fit because obviously there's some brackets on the underneath of my car that will need to be cut off to be able to get this further up to then mash some holes through the floor for fixings for this um, and quite frankly it's pretty well worn as well um, whereas the TDI one is in a lot better condition um, so yeah, it's got a GTI knob on it, but it's actually out of TDI. It's a standard five-speed selector, which I assume would be in most of the Lupos and Arosas. Um, but yeah, kind of that's what it is. Um, so I thought I'll have a quick look at just connected to the box, to be honest. Um, so obviously it's a five-speed selector, five-speed cables. I've not done any kind of messing around with cables or anything at the minute. Um, straight onto the box, which is the standard six-speed bracket, which comes with your gearbox. And obviously the six speed selector mech. Um, I've not swapped anything out five speed. Now there's a slight difference on the Skoda to the Golf um, with the weight, how the weight looks. Some of them go around the back, um, some of them go for the front. This is a Skoda, so it's on the front. Um, it's irrelevant, the, kind of the points are in the same place, this bracket at the back's the same. But just to kind of show you that um, I can get all gears with the five speed stick and the five speed cables. Uh, bear in mind this is a bit loose it's just loosely bolted on same as obviously it's not clipped properly but it's just kind of just check everything so you can see by if you want to do a reference point for yourself to see that i'm not actually making this up you'll be able to see um 
buy this black mark if it's uh, what gear it's in. So we're going in for reverse here, which is all the way in. So obviously the black mark's disappeared. Knock it out of reverse, back to neutral. Goes down slightly for first and second. Back to neutral. You've then got third and fourth. Back to neutral. And then you've got fifth and six so that's all gears all six gears using standard five speed cables and again a five speed selector so i didn't have to take that out annoyingly for the realize i wouldn't have had to take that out this morning <laughs> but obviously everyone says you've got to change your selectors you've got to change your cables etc so uh, it is what it is i'm just going to put it back in and use the original cables that come on the car originally